Nobody thinks that you shouldn't exist. Why are you saying that? Why do you think that? Why do you, why do you want to be so oppressed so bad that you have to say this terrible, stupid stuff? Nobody thinks that. Nobody. You should exist. <laughs> what kind of... You can't even make your own claim. You've contradicted yourself in your own video, and you're doing it with the most smug look on your face, bro. You can't even abide by your own rules. Shame. Hi, everyone. So it's that time of year again when it's time for our weigh-in. So let's try and get it in here. Because the way my legs are, it's a little difficult for this fight to do it. Okay, so here it goes. It's going up. And we're at 674. At what point do we stop? and look at ourselves in the mirror and go, maybe I sh it's time for me to make a change in a very significant way. I don't know what the context is behind this person gaining weight for a significant amount of time because I can think of no reason why anyone should ever weigh 600 plus pounds. That has got to be so astronomically harmful to f for somebody's weight. I mean, I know it is. She's literally struggling to even get on the platform to even weigh herself at all. And this is one of those like industrial strength ones too, where the the, the measurement system itself is not even attached to it. It's attached by like a wire or something like that. I, I cannot think of a single reason why somebody would not look at this and go, I need to change. I need to make a big difference in my life. It, it, it just, it appalls me, honestly. The new way shown in the back. 800 pounds, man. Damn, I didn't even know these beds had weighing systems, dude. This is some next level shit right here, dude. So that means she gained weight. She gained like 100 and what, 40 pounds? 140, 130 pounds on top of whatever she was weighing before? It's just too much. Well, how could you gain more weight at 600 pounds? 600 pounds, you're more than people on my 600 pound life. That should be a wake up call. But no, it's not a wake up call. You're just gonna continue to be fat, which I mean, in all honesty, if that's what you want to do with your life, go ahead. Uh, obviously, the woman's in the hospital right now. <laughs> Not funny, though. Are you guys surprised? I am. I have 802 pounds. So, that's a new record. Why are you happy about that? There's nothing good about any of this. You're literally in the hospital right now on oxygen, and you're talking about some, woohoo, yeah, I gained it. I gained, I'm up to 800 pounds. That's not good. What kind of, what, what, why are you thinking that's like an achievement of some kind? That is not a good thing. That actually looks easy. Why did you, why would you ever think, who is rewarding you for this? Is not it, your God, your deity? Is he coming down to bless you for this great achievement that you have put upon yourself? What are we doing right now? Where are we in society where we're celebrating 800 pounds of person? That's like five people. That's like five fucking people, bro. That's not good at all. But, you know, I guess if, if this is an achievement that you want, I mean, guess, you know, it's different metrics and things like that. Like, I knew a dude, and he used to tell me, like, dude, I'm on my 40th body. I'm on my 40th, 40th body. For me, that wouldn't be something I would brag about personally. I don't really find a lot of value in having sex with high denominations of women. But he did, and that was his achievement. So he was like, yeah, bro, I did. And I was like, yeah, high five, bro. It's really cool that you had sex with 40 women. For me, it would be something like, yeah, I was able to, I don't know, stack four spoons on top of one another and then have them actually stand up right that'd be like the achievement for me for that type of thing but for this woman it just seems like being 800 pounds that's an achievement for her which <laughs> is actually incredibly depressing given the fact that she can't even walk like she was literally struggling to walk at 600 pounds i don't even know what it's gonna be like at 800 pounds i hope she gets some help this was 2019 maybe if you have an update leave it down below in the comment section if you know who this woman is Oh my god, this is an Instagram ad today. This is where we're at now Oops. in our world. Is it legal, safe? I Hold on, I gotta go back. This is where we're at now in our world. Is it legal, safe? I have questions.
Ozempic injectables, man. I did a whole bunch of research on Ozempic, okay? Because people were saying, like, David, that's not what Ozempic is. It's not just this and this and this. And I did some research. By research, I mean I just, you know, read the whole Wikipedia article. And then I had to discover what that was. And I had to discover, like, what it means to be a peptide and all this other stuff. So I did a lot of research in preparation to whenever somebody brings up the Ozempic Wagovi or whatever, like, the generic name might be. So now I'm really informed on what this is, okay? So it's a diabetic medication it is prescribed for weight loss and things like that it's an appetite suppressant as well and it's also a peptide so anyway let's keep going i don't think there's anything wrong by the way if you want to take uh ozempic and the inject injectable ones whatever dude what's wrong with that what, what, what was wrong with that for a society that i mean there are side effects but there's gonna be side effects with anything loves to claim that all fat people are lazy and never go to the gym doesn't this seem like a rather lazy way to lose weight yeah I think I under, <laughs> she's right in the, in the sense of like, you're doing something outside of the realm of order and ordinarily in order to achieve weight loss. But it's kind of like the same argument I hear a lot when it comes to like guys that do a lot of drugs that are also like Mr. Olympia. So like they'll go, Oh, this guy, he's a Mr. Olympia, but he didn't really do anything to get to that size. Like all he really did was take a whole bunch of drugs and that's what made him so big. That is bullshit. That is incredibly bullshit. Like, yes, did the drugs help? Of course. Of course. I'm not even going to lie and say that the drugs didn't do anything at all. But you cannot deny the years of effort that one must put in in order to achieve any type of physique like that, let alone the amount of drugs that these people are processing for, right? And then also, it's not as simple as taking drugs, therefore you're going to be big, right? No, these guys are eating tons and tons of tons and tons of food. They're training like literally every single day. They're working out every single day. They're doing what they need to do in order to maintain that size, which is incredible for a lot of these guys. So if your argument is people shouldn't go to outside and unnatural places in order to achieve something, that's bullshit. Are you going to take away the Mr. Olympias because this guy took drugs? No, that's not how that works. No, of course not. That guy put in a lot of effort in the same way that even though you take this drug, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to alleviate all of the responsibility that it would take to lose the weight. It probably takes away a little bit of it, but you ultimately still have to put in a ton, a ton, a ton of work. It's like any type of bariatric surgery a lot of people just think you get the bariatric surgery booyah you're good you don't even need to worry about eating anymore you don't have to worry about losing weight because you're going to lose it automatically because you got the bariatric surgery nope it's not how that works too many times i've seen people get in that surgery and then gain weight afterwards like they go down they get the surgery they lose 200 pounds let's say they were 600 they lose 200 and then they come back up because their diets are they never change the diet too many people think it's a one and done it's not a one and done you still have to follow through the 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 bariatric surgery, depending on which one you get, is just a starting. It's just a starting point. It's supposed to alleviate some of the starting pressure, and maybe it makes it easier for you. But if you're somebody like Boogie2988 or Wings of Redemption or somebody like that that had the bariatric surgery and still has really shit diets, ordering Uber Eats every single fucking week, right? Then yes, your diet is, it doesn't matter how many weight loss surgeries you get. You're still going to gain weight ultimately, and you're still going to be fat as shit because your diet sucks dick. And it's probably even worse now because you're t you you fundamentally change the composition of your stomach in order to in order to alleviate the weight the weight gain. And because you did that, you're still eating like shit. So now your stomach is like I don't know a quarter of the size that it was ordinarily, but you're still stuffing stuffing it with the same amount of food. So you probably shouldn't even got it to begin with if you weren't gonna follow through. The same thing here. Like you, it doesn't. It's not gonna take away everything. It's not. It might be like a little. I don't know. Like. It might be putting on a better pair of shoes. It might push you a little further. Like, you can't even be bothered to go to the doctor to get your weight loss prescription anymore. It's going to come to my house. I'm not even going to step out the front door. I'm, well, I'm pretty sure you can get a lot of prescriptions mailed to you now. Does she not know that you can get prescriptions mailed to you? I know a lot of people that are old that get their, 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 sh unless it's like the really, really hard drugs, you know what I'm talking about? Like maybe if you're really old, you have a certain drug that you have to go, you have to go to the pharmacy for that because it requires a signature and things like that. But most drugs nowadays, like if it's like some, something simple, you can get a mail to you. It's not that big of a deal. I'm, I don't know what the case is here. If you can get that particular type of drug mailed to you, I don't see what the problem would be on that. Like, what do you think is, what do you think is going to happen, dude? You think the mailman's going to fucking inject himself with a, diabe a diabetes medicine? No, dude, probably fucking not. So, uh, I don't even understand what the point of this is. Like, you're so fat that you can't even go outside to get your medication. 
No, it's just called most people nowadays have ceded the ability to go out. Dude, you know how many people I know in 2024 that don't even go food shopping anymore? I know so many guys that... Just go on the just go on the Walmart app and just go. I want that 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 deliver, and then they deliver it the day or the next day. That's like I would say eighty percent of the guys that I know. I still go out of my way and I still go get the groceries myself. I'm not bragging about it. I'm sure it'd be easier, but I have never really like stepped into the realm of getting that stuff delivered. But everybody gets everything delivered nowadays, so I don't even know what this uh, this 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 point of this is. Description anymore? It's gonna come to my house. I'm not even gonna step out the front door. You don't have to go to your doctor, by the way, to get the prescription. I mean, you do initially. Like, you do have to get the prescription in order to get the drugs, obviously. But once you get that, do you think you have to keep going back to the doctor and going, please, man, I need this drug because otherwise I will be fat. No, dude, you have – It's once you get it, it's good. You, you can just keep coming. The, the, the prescription will just keep being met. You understand? <laughs> okay. I feel like this person has no idea. Okay, whatever. How are you any better than these fatties that you're so afraid of becoming then? You know? I, just like, it's such a crazy comparison. Can you imagine trying to compare somebody that is chronically obese, somebody that can literally not walk? Or sometimes even, let's just say a regular obese person, like somebody that's 200, 300 pounds, right? Which is crazy, by the way, three, two, 300 pounds. Let's say you're that much. These people are going to be suffering in immeasurable ways that I feel like a lot of people are not prepared to talk about, especially these people. Like simple things like walking for long periods of time, not possible. Getting up off the floor might be incredibly taxing for you. Things like this are like for me and you might not be that big of an issue, but for a fat people, yeah, it's a big fucking issue. So when you say something like, oh, you're basically like you're not even really even doing anything anymore because you're just having the drug do anything for you. It's dumb. Is dumb. You still have to put in a lot of fucking work. It's not a hundred percent. It's not a one and done thing. You have to do a lot of work to maintain weight loss. You have to do a lot of work to ensure that you're doing the dietary functions. You're going to the gym. You're walking more. This stuff's like all important, dude. It's not as simple as like taking a drug and then booyah, you're good. No, one could venture to think you're not actually worried about your own health. You're just concerned with being skinny. Because here's the real question for people who just seem to be in such a rush to get thin, right? Once I get skinny, my life will begin. You, you lose the weight and then what happens? You are healthier, most likely. Most of the time, I would not recommend people to go outside their way to take like weight loss drugs or get like these, um, you know, these bariatric surgeries to try to alleviate their weight as fast as they possibly can. I know a lot of people have a really like good success rate with these things. Like I'm sure that they're very useful, but... I think ultimately you should probably try as hard as you can to lose the weight as organically as possible to see how far you can take yourself because I feel like a lot of people will be surprised at the amount of weight that they can lose without any side of without without any type of like outside intervention. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't you shouldn't have to do that. Like if you have to do it, completely fine. I'm not shitting on you for doing those things. But I think so many people because we've been conditioned in today's world to think that we need everything now and we need to do things now and this this it has to happen now otherwise it's never going to happen that's bullshit it's okay to have prolonged happiness like you can see the happiness that you have right now that because you know in two three four five a year from now you're going to feel a lot better and sure you may have not lost the weight to the same degree that somebody else did if they had gotten bariatric surgery or maybe they were on zempic or wagovi which is basically the same thing that person might have other things going, right? That person might have like downward effects of that particular type of drug or that weight loss thing. And I'm not saying they do or they might not, but I know that if you lose it organically, you won't have any of those things, right? You won't have any of the side effects of the weight loss drug or the uh, the bariatric surgery. So <clears throat> I'd always recommend for somebody to do it organically, to try to like do it through calories in, calories out, live a more, live a more um, active lifestyle to try to, to try to really, to really, Push yourself as much as you can to lose that weight organically. But if you can't do that, I think it's okay. You can, you, I think these drugs are pretty useful. What's your next step? You, you lose the weight and then what happens? What's your next step? actually taking steps without having ankle pains, joint pains. <laughs> can you believe saying that, dude? It's such a crazy thing to say. Do you think like you're just going to like magically lose weight and then every other aspect of your life will come together i really i really don't like it when these people think that weight loss is like a one and done thing in the sense of like your life will be immediately benefited in every single way possible when nobody's ever saying that all we're saying is that when you lose weight you no longer have to deal with the the, the side effects of being fat and i think that in and of itself should automatically be sufficient for most people nobody is going into weight loss and thinking when i lose weight i'm going to be not only 100 more attractive i'm going to be 
200% healthier. I'm never going to get illnesses. I'm going to get all the menses. I'm going to get all the girls. Nobody's thinking that. What people are mostly thinking is I have a lot of problems right now with my weight and I have a lot of issues with my knees, my, my joints, my back. I have this big ass gut. I'm pre-diabetic. Maybe you have a whole bunch of illnesses attributed to being fat. And when you lose that weight, a lot of those things will alleviate themselves and you no longer have to worry about that stuff. So given that most people are going into it, just trying to reduce the downward effects of obesity. I don't know why you would ever think that somebody's going into it thinking that they're going to completely change everything about their life in the sense of like becoming healthier, becoming, no, that's not, nobody thinks like that. Just because you're not fat. I'm sure you're still going to have problems. Like, the, but you, now you don't have to worry about the weight as the issue anymore, right? Now you have one less problem to worry about. You understand? That's what it's about. Like you have these issues. Everybody's got issues. You got issues. I got issues. But now it, when you lose the weight, you no longer have that as an issue, which we know is an issue. Do you think fat people are just all sitting here in like stasis of like, mm, waiting for my life to begin once I am thin? Ho, ho, ho. No, I think you, I think a lot of these fat people give up or at least the fat people in the realm of fat acceptance i don't think it's so difficult <clears throat> i think they genuinely do believe in what they're saying i do think that they honestly believe that losing weight is implausible and that it's fat phobic and it's completely negative and all this other stuff right that's fine for them to think i think most people though when they're thinking about them being fat they're thinking about it in a very passive way like they're thinking okay i know i'm fat but i have a lot of shit to do in my life already so like i have to go out and do my work I have to maybe take care of kids. I have a lot of house chores. You have a lot of shit going on, right? So you're not really thinking about how you're gonna progressively get this weight off of you. It's just something that's accumulating over time because you have, your life is stressful, you're doing a lot of stuff and you kind of forget about it, right? <clears throat> and then slowly but surely, the, eight, the weight adds up, okay? And then eventually I feel like when most people, it's either they lose it or they don't lose it, which is fine on both ends. As long as you're not going into the spectrum of being fat is completely beautiful and fantastic and awesome like these people, right? Most people are thinking about it like that. So if we're going down that realm, I don't like, what is the point for these people to go this far to try to justify the existence of being fat? Nobody's saying it's going to alleviate everything. They're in like stasis of like, mm, waiting for my life to begin once I am thin. Ho, ho, ho. Why are you so afraid of being fat? Because there are tons of negative effects with being fat. What do you, what? That's like somebody saying, why are you afraid to be shot? Why are you afraid of somebody robbing you? Why are you afraid of somebody pulling a knife on you? What are you talking about? This is a pretty obvious reason why I don't want any of those things to happen to me. Because they're, they're going to cause harm to me. And guess what? I don't want to have that happen to me. So what do you mean, like, why am I afraid? Because there's, like, all this bad stuff about being fat, and I want none of it. You understand? I want none of it. <laughs> what kind of, what? Why would you even ask this question at all? What kind of shit is that? Can you imagine somebody literally coming up to you and be like, bro, what's like, what's wrong with being stabbed? Like, why are you being a bitch? Like, just get stabbed like eight times, bro. What's wrong with that? What are you doing? Stop being a bitch. Just take that shit real quick. What's wrong with it? What the fuck you mean what's wrong with it? Have you ever really asked yourself why? Because you are, you are afraid. Uh-huh. That phobia is the phobia. You're afraid of being fat. Why are you afraid of that so much? I know the answer. It's because you're not actually afraid of being fat itself. You're afraid of being treated the way society treats you're fat. You're coping, dude. You're coping OD right now, man. You're having all of the negative effects of being fat. And then you're literally going, I don't want to lose weight. So instead of losing weight, I'm going to shit on anybody else that's trying to lose weight. And then I'm also going to tell them that they don't actually feel good while losing weight. It's just the added benefit of having society respect you which is bullshit by the way most of the time when people are losing weight they're not looking at it in the sense of like now society's gonna respect me and now when i get pulled over the cop's not gonna think that i'm big as fuck and my gut's gonna flop out on the floor when he opens my door that's not what's gonna happen most people are thinking when i lose this weight i'm gonna feel better i'm gonna have more productive life i'm gonna be more aerobic i'm gonna live a healthier cleaner life my lungs won't be impeded as much most people are thinking about that most people are not thinking about and if you're th if you're gonna go well, that may not be what they're thinking, David. They may not be thinking about all of the added benefits of that, but that's a, that's something that's going to happen as a consequence of losing weight. That's great. That's awesome. So you're telling me not only am I losing weight for health reasons, okay, for respiratory issues that I'm going to alleviate, all this stuff that's good with your health, but now I'm also getting the added benefit 
of just being thin and I'm like the people are going to respect me more. Maybe the boys, the men on the street will think I'm more of a delectable object. Maybe all these things, I, who knows, right? You're telling me I'm going to get all those benefits too? Huh, man, that kind of sound like a really good deal right now. Uh, kind of make me, kind of makes me ask, why do you want to be fat so bad? Uh, you kind of really just convinced me that there really isn't a point to being fat. Huh, I can't believe that you are fat. Why would you ask me why I don't want to be fat while giving me all the terribleness of being fat and then asking me that question? You kind of sound like maybe you should not be fat. People. So for all you lazy folks who just want to get your mail order weight loss, um... There's nothing wrong getting thing. Bro, what is wrong with mail order shit, by the way? Can we... What? Why is this an issue for this woman? What is going on with that shit? Have you never gotten anything delivered to you in the mail? I'm sorry that I don't want to go to the fucking Amazon factory and go, hey, bro, uh, can I get this? No, I want that shit delivered to my house, bro. There's a reason why people pay for fucking Prime. There's a reason why people want shit delivered in the fucking mail. You want, you want to know why? Because it's convenient. You don't have to leave the house. It's already at your crib. You can go outside, pick it up off the porch and go inside. Hopefully nobody steals it, right? But like, what the fuck? What is wrong with that? Is it, why are you even bringing this up as like a negative thing? Like, oh, you got your fucking, you got your fucking weight loss medication. Can you imagine saying that to anybody? Like an old person is getting their fucking old medications or something like that. And they go, you fucking, you, you, you can't go outside and get your medication. What's wrong? What are you, lazy? And then the old girl, oh, baby, I'm 92 years old. Oh, my knee hurt i can't lift myself off the bed i can't walk down to the pharmacy and get my medication what kind of shit is that you gonna make fun of grandma huh what kind of fucked up shit is that dude so for all you lazy folks yeah. who just want to get your mail order weight loss that's right um <laughs> mail order anything honestly yeah deliver it to me maybe do the work oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah Oh yeah, don't get it delivered. When they ask you, hey, uh, yeah, your medication can be delivered. Uh, you, you want us to deliver that? Go, no, nah, I'm, I'm not lazy. I'm not a bitch. Don't, nah. I'm going to walk to it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to drive 45 minutes to the pharmacy so I can get it. And then I'm going to get in my car and drive back 45 minutes so that way I can. Oh, you said it would just, it would come tomorrow? Nah, nah, I'm not a bitch. Why, you think I'm a bitch, huh? You think I'm lazy? For trying to get that shit delivered. Why would you even ask me that question? First of all, I can't believe that you would even ask me that question. You fucking dirty, disgusting pharmacist. Yes, I'll be there today. Today. Picking up my medication. Don't fucking ever think that I'm lazy. Yeah. Do the work. Yeah. Put a little extra critical thought in there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely think about putting critical thought in there. Where's the critical thought here, though? Yeah. You would think it'd be somewhere up here. But it's obviously somewhere down there. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about the vagina, dude, okay? I'm talking about the fucking gut. All right, dude? Stop. Stop it. Be blessed, you hear? Fat phobia survives through intergenerational trauma. It causes parents to look at their children and say, Yo, Blake, damn, you need to lose some weight. What you been eating? Them Rice Krispie treats again? I thought I closed off that cow. I try to tell you that this is not a good thing. You can get treats every once in a while. You fat. You need to lose some weight. You won't be able to run around with the with the other kids. They're gonna bully you. That's what he's thinking. I don't know what you mean by inter. Bro, it's one thing to say like, oh, my family was a victim of like institutional racism in the sense of like all the white families were able to buy and own houses in a certain area, but my family could never do that because they were literally prohibited to do that. So there could be that. Like you can say that, sure. But what the fuck do you mean, institute? Like inter in inter. What's this fucking crazy ass word? intergenerational trauma in the sense of like maybe your grandma was taught like don't don't be fat because there's negative stereotypes and negative complications there's complications to being fat and then your grandma tells you your mom to not do that and your mom tells you not to do that and you're looking at that because you think you're so enlightened <laughs> i don't know why so many people think they are smarter than the previous generation, than the previous generation, the previous generation. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're just like them, okay? I don't care that you're separated by 20 years. It's not how that fucking works. You're not as smart, you're not, you're not smarter than them because you have the fucking internet and you think that you can, you know, justify shit and your new debating skills that you never actually used against anybody with actual intelligence. No, you're just terrible. It's just terrible, dude, okay? Stop trying to make up reasons to not lose weight, okay? I'm sorry that your grandma is <laughs> I'm sorry that your grandma is more active than you are and you're 22 years old and your grandma's 85. Generational trauma. It causes parents to look at their children and say, "It's fucking terrible. Are you just dying your eyebrows, man." 
your life would be better if your body was different. 100%. Yeah. Uh, is that, I mean, don't say that to your kid. Obviously, don't say that. Don't say, listen, don't say that to your kid. Don't tell your kid that their life would be better if they were thinner. Don't say that. Try to keep as much information like that away from them. I don't even know why you would think they would need to hear that. And I'm pretty sure most parents are not dispelling that information upon their children. That's fucking terrible. That's like a hailstorm of terrible information the kid can't do anything with. Most of the time, people are just going to see their kid that's fat and go, my kid could be thinner and that kid could be living a better lifestyle because when they leave a ch childrenhood and go into adulthood, they won't be held down by the restriction of early childhood obesity, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. A chronic lifetime of joint pains that I bestowed upon them because I decided that Kids can eat Rice Krispie Treats whenever they want, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And they can eat four times more than a grown adult person. Yeah, that's what you're saying, all right, dude? So when you say this shit, yeah, um, most of the time a child's life could be improved if they're very, very fat, 100%. That's yes, because now they're able to run and they're able to be children. I'm so, I can't believe this is a far-fetched idea. I, I'm sorry, this is a hot take. Defending children running around try to reach through generations to save each other from the pain of exclusion, of bigotry, of discrimination. And we're trying to save you from a lifetime of joint pain, diabetes, and high blood pressure, dude. I think ours are a lot better than yours. Your, your shit's just made up. What do you, you just make stuff up to try to make a claim. It doesn't make any sense. And in turn, we become the gatekeepers, deciding which bodies are acceptable and which are not. What are you talking about? What the fuck is, what are the words coming out of your mouth right now? Why do you have to do this every single time like you're an anime character? You're not an anime character, dude. I don't care how rosé your hair is, man. Children are not supposed to be, they're not supposed to weigh as, if your child is like eight years old and that kid weighs as much as a grown man, that's not good. That's, nah, that's not good. Unless your kid is like six foot four and a, 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 a big ass dude and he's a time traveler maybe. I don't fucking know. But no, they're not supposed to be massive. They're supposed to be able to walk around without little and till any bro. When I was a kid, I remember I used to fuck up my shit a lot, dude. I remember one time I had a scab on my knee, okay? And it was a giant scab on my knee, okay? And it was fresh. Maybe three days, four days, five days, but it was like, you know, fresh. And I remember, I thought it was going to be a great idea if we did Ring Around the Rosie on this grate, okay? We were living in this like cul-de-sac area. It wasn't a cul-de-sac area. It was like it was a more civilized projects, right? It was. But there was a grate in the middle of a field. I don't know why they put it there, but it was there. And we decided, like four or five other kids, to like hold onto each other's arms and run around this shit. I lost balance and slid across it like I was playing air guitar on stage across my knees. And my whole, the whole scab slid off my leg. And I wasn't a bitch. <laughs> I, I had jeans on, right? And I remember looking at my jeans and there was blood all over my jeans. And I was like, oh, yeah, I got to go home, guys. And they were like, why, David? Why, David? I was like, ah, psh, my fucking leg. I was like, my fucking leg, dude. I'm bleeding all over. I don't, I got to go home, right? And I went home. You know what happened? As soon as I saw my mom, I started, I started crying. <laughs> what kind of bitch ass shit is that? I started crying when I see my mom. Anyway, the point I'm making is, even though obviously that's not something good that happened to me, it was something good that happened to me. You have to go through stuff like that. You have to, you know what I'm talking about? You have to have fun times with people and you have to run through the fucking rain and get a UTI. I don't know. The point I'm making is when you're a child, it's okay to have fuck ups and not having those time to like experiment and find out what you do and do not like and, you know, uh, explore the outside realm, dude. That's not a good thing. And when you're like two, 300 pounds at seven, nine years old, dude, you're not doing shit besides sitting on a bench. That's just what it comes down to, dude. Because any other movement that you do is going to be agonizing. Making children aware that their bodies are a cause for concern and are being watched closely. As opposed to having a child be monstrously obese, suffering from the negative effects of being obese, and then also ingraining into them that for the rest of their lives, they're probably never going, because like a kid that's obese is going to be obese for the rest of their life because it's been embedded into these children that being obese is okay and the diets that they have are okay. Most people's diets, okay? Most people's diets are ingrained in them by the time they're 16, okay? What you like today is probably the same thing that you liked when you were 16 years old and that's probably the reason why you eat it so frequently nowadays, okay? So, because you're ingraining all these terrible stereotypes and things like that into your kid here, and you might be thinking, oh, but the other side's equally bad. You could say that. 
I'm not saying they're both bad in the sense of like you have to instill these qualities into your kid to tell them not every food is okay and you can determine that to be a bad i would not determine that to be bad i would that would determine that to be you know quality over quantity some foods are not as good as other foods and you have to be the one ultimately that decides those things okay as opposed to just eat whatever the fuck you want and i don't know die by the age of 35 because you've been obese since you were seven we experience weight cycling as we attempt to become smaller over and over again and we think if i could just teach my child good habits that sugar is bad and exercise is mandatory and checking in with your body is unnecessary and actually what we are teaching them is disorder eating weight stigma it's, it's, i'm sorry dude it's just what is this what is this like what is that dude what are you like john travolta from saturday night fever what are you doing why are you doing that why are you being so extra right now your body is unnecessary and actually what we are teaching them is disordered eating weight stigma the body it's disordered eating regardless okay can we just stop can we just stop for a second i'm sick of these people saying that because you tell you teach your kids that it's not good to eat pizza every day and that it's better to eat it maybe once a week or once every two weeks and living a healthy lifestyle in the realm of dietary function is optimal I'm sorry that you consider that to be disordered eating, but you don't consider somebody eating whatever the fuck they want, whenever they want, and have no reason not to eat. Like, you just consider that to not be a, 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 an ED as well? That's fucking crazy, okay? I'm sick of it. I'm sick of these people saying that shit because they're always taking the high road. They're always saying that they're better than us because they can choose. They don't judge food based off morality. Fuck you, okay? Fuck you. That's terrible information. I'm sorry. Donuts are not going to be as nutritious as like a, a piece of chicken breast, dude. You're going to get more out of the chicken breast in the long run and it's going to be less calories. I don't know why you people are so hooked on the fact that you want to defend this lifestyle in the weirdest way possible. Your shit doesn't make sense. Hierarchy and a complete disconnection from and distrust of our bodies. We learn to fear fat and we gift that to them as if it will protect them. Oh, it will because... It's super weird to me when people make generalizations about the health of fat people and then they describe fat individuals who are like maybe in like the 1% of the population. True, dude. I do hear that quite a bit. I think most of the time if you're making generalizations general, – she's right on this. If, if you're making generalizations, you have to stick to the generalizations, right? Because like if you're going, oh, fat people have joint pains, this and this, and then you're – your drawing point is somebody uh, off my 600 pound life or something like that, then yes, naturally that person's obviously going to have big ass joint pains and things like that. Luckily, most of the time when people do that, they're not going to the my 600 pound person because they are the exception they're talking about their friends. They're talking about their families that may be two, three, 400 pounds that you even know you might think is that, is that common? Yes. It's super common. Live in America. You know, most likely you're going to have a family member or somebody that you know, that's in the bro. I know a dude that's like five foot, three and he weighs 270 pounds right but he's so short it looks like he has to be 350 that weight is not going to be the same weight as a like another guy friend that i know who's six foot two and he weighs that same amount he can he can pack that weight on he doesn't even look fat you know what i'm talking you ever see a guy that's so tall so big so burly and then you ask him how much he weighs and he's like oh yeah i'm 250 i'm 270 you're like what the fuck are you talking about what are you saying <laughs> what where where is that shit? Were you hiding it somewhere? Is that behind your ankles? Where's the weight? How? What do you got like? So you got like, big aluminum balls in your fucking pockets, dude? That's a lie. It's just like that sometimes, okay? So yes, I agree with that. That a lot of people, if you're gonna talk about, if you're gonna talk in generalizations, and then you're gonna go to like the very extreme measures, I think that's probably true. So I will give her that. I don't think it's really that weird for me to say that like people who are at either extreme end of the spectrum of weight are probably dealing with some issues. And even if that was the case, I still think that if people are bed bound and like having issues related to their mobility as a result of their weight, that those people still deserve access to health care, compassion, respect. True. I don't think anybody's saying that, though. Uh, maybe, maybe this person is saying, mm, yeah, because being suffocated by your rolls, being bed bound and your organs actually being squeezed together by your fat isn't going to, so I don't think this person's even saying that they're not saying that they don't deserve respect or anything like that. Obviously everybody deserves a baseline of respect in the sense of like, yeah, like I should treat you the way I think that I would want to be treated if I just met you. Right. But I think that's subjective up to the person. Let's just say that. And then also, what does she say before that? that those people still deserve access to health care they do deserve access to health care but like you can't 
When you say deserve access to health care, it's not going to be the same health care compared to somebody that can walk into a clinic and get service there. If a person is bed bound, they're going to be very limited by what they can do. And I know it really sucks to say, but it is what it is. Like in the same way that somebody's in a wheelchair, they're not going to be having the same access to certain buildings and other things like that because their legs don't work. You understand? Can we just touch on that? A lot of the things that you're talking about here are just not things that we could really control. And even if we could control those things, you're talking about like big changes to society. And then like, also, if you're talking about respect, again, it's not up to me how somebody else should respect another person. It's up to that individual. Compassion, respect. But anyway, the initial comment was about how fat causes death. I replied that fat isn't a cause of death. Fat isn't a cause of death. Okay, sure. Fat, fat is not a cause of death. That's like... <sighs> Man, yes, it's it's such a it's such a bullshit claim. Yes, it's true that fat is not a cause of death. Death, but the downward effects of the fat in and of themselves would be the cause of death. You understand? Like, oh, man, dude, I gotta think of an analogy of how stupid this is. That's like somebody getting bitten by a raccoon that had rabies, and then somebody saying, "Oh no, it wasn't the bite that killed him. It was the rabies." Yes, I know it was the rabies, but I wouldn't have gotten, if I didn't get bit, I wouldn't have had the rabies to begin with. It was the bite, the inception of the bite that got me the rabies, right? So like, it's, it's such a dumb statement, dude. Like nobody is disagreeing with you. And it, again, if you're going to sit here and say, we shouldn't, if we're going to make general statements, we should be pairing them with other general statements. You just completely shat on your own statement by saying something incredibly dumb like that and specifying. So like, if you said being fat, is not is not the main reason for death okay that's true but that'd be like me saying uh like that'd be like me saying women wear makeup and men don't wear makeup and then you go well there are some men that wear makeup i know but it's a general fucking statement so if some most people if they say he died of obesity they're not thinking that it was the fucking fat itself like the guy was sleeping and the gut rolls slid across his fucking throat and choked him out because it was like sentient the gut the stomach of the gut itself was fucking sentient and it was like fucking maybe put the pillow over your head like it was chief from 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 that one movie one full of the fucking cuckoo's nest okay nobody's nobody's saying that Okay, nobody is saying that, but you know what we mean. And again, you can't even abide by your own fucking definitions, dude. If you're gonna say generally speaking, if you're gonna bring up generalities, yes, people die of obesity, but it's not the it's not like the direct cause. It's the what the obesity puts upon people. Fucking stupid, dude. What kind of you can't even make your own claim. You've contradicted yourself in your own video and you're doing it with the most smug look on your face, bro. You can't even abide by your own rules. Shame. And you replied by painting a caricature of extremely fat people. That also doesn't change the fact that being fat is not a cause of death. Hope that helps. It didn't help. You made no points. Your justification for these things made absolutely no sense at all. And you literally contradicted your own claims in your own video about people making generalizations when you couldn't even abide by your own rules about generalizations. Fat people are more likely to experience weight-based stigma from family and doctors than from other potential social agents. Yeah, no fucking shit. Because you're... What kind of fucking shit is this, dude? Like, obvious fucking lead, the people that are around you the most are gonna say the, the, the shit that you hear the most because of the people around you the most. That doesn't, like, yeah, fucking duh. That'd be like somebody going like, oh, you're gonna hear more mechanical advice from a mechanic than you would from, like, a, a golf club. I know, because it's a fucking mechanic and golf clubs can't talk to you. They go, man, dude. Only, I don't know how this person can say the most obvious information and then make it seem like it's profound. It's not profound, it's obvious. Fucking duh. There's an interesting study that unpacks <laughs> this by Dr. Rebecca Poole and Dr. Kelly Brunel. You know what I love about this individual is that they always bring up studies and they never do anything. Like they never, they never validify the point. They never act. I don't even know why she, most of the time she even quotes these things. Oftentimes when she brings up these like studies or uh, statistical evidence, it has almost nothing to do with the video and she'll preference it at the end and go, I'm just saying that maybe sometimes you can look at other things. They basically gave an online survey to over 2000 individuals. I'm already like questioning it dude. If you're, you're talking about an online survey, bro. Come on now. And ask them about their experiences with weight stigma, uh, the ways that they cope with weight stigma, and other kinds of mental health variables. The sort of interesting finding that they have is that the majority of coping strategies are actually quite diverse. 
People cope with stigma in a variety of ways, and their major finding is that more positive coping mechanisms, like positive self-talk, are better for mental health than negative coping mechanisms. I think part of what makes this study so important is that it really clarifies that when people experience stigmatizing situations, where we can start to intervene is in our own social circles, within our families. When we are out Did you just bring up... Did I just hear... Was the entire point of your video, when you have a family member that's going through something, maybe you should be there for them? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. Why couldn't you just say that? Like, how you make a whole one minute, one minute and a half video and just say that? Why didn't you just say that, huh? Like, when you have... Is that a far-fetched take? Like, if you have a friend that's going through something, you should be there for them in, in a positive way? Why even bother going that? Why'd you even need that study? What was that? What was that even there for? What do you? Why would you even bring that? That no relevance. Okay, all right. Hey, you know, all right, dude. I love her. I love that individual, dude. I love this person right here, dude. My favorite. My favorite, dude. Vean is in our own social circles within our families. <laughs> so when we dumb. are asking people to prove their health status in order to be accepted or acceptable, we are not only operating under a healthist paradigm, we are walking in the footsteps of eugenicists. <laughs> if your fat politic does not allow for a range of abilities and a range of health statuses, it is literally useless. Are you under the belief that certain people of certain weights cannot do certain things because of their weight like can we talk about for instance if somebody didn't have legs would you be okay with that person running like triathlons or something like that because when you say things like that it ignores the very very obvious factor of physical ailments that could most definitely impede your ability to do certain acts okay so when you weigh two three hundred pounds it may not be as bad but when you weigh 350 400 500 pounds and then you start going we need you to stand up for eight hours a day suddenly these things become issues suddenly you can't stand up for eight hours okay and these things are important factors okay and i'm sick of people not i'm sick of people talking about this shit and never never looking into it like that accepting fat people with the caveat as long as they're healthy isn't progressive it's violent i first of all dude i think you gotta look up the definition of violent you can't i'm sick of these people saying violence as like a oh yeah somebody said something to me and it was violent first of all dude there was no violence no physical harm put upon you okay the only physical harm that i'm seeing is the big you know the fucking obesity all right dude there's okay i actually agree with this i think right here accepting fat people with the caveat as long as they're healthy isn't progressive i actually agree with that i think that if they're fat and especially obese it's not even true to say as long as they're healthy. I think that's like somebody blissfully ignorant going, I don't want to actually address this problem. It would be much easier if I just didn't say anything at all or I just gave them, but they're healthy. I've seen this happen so many times, dude. Somebody that has like a drug addiction, somebody that has a bad gambling habit, somebody that has this. I knew a dude used to gamble all his money away all the time. And I knew this other guy that would say, it's okay because at least he has more money in the bank. What are you talking about? That guy just literally dropped $5,000 two nights ago. And you're talking about at least he has still, at least he still has money. At least he still has a house. At least he has still a car. What are you talking about? It's still a bad habit. It's not good regardless. In the same way that somebody is, if somebody is unhealthy or if somebody is like monstrously healthy through the realm of obesity and you go, but at least they're healthy. They're not. They're not. Why are you saying that? What do you mean by healthy? What is your definition of healthy? No, I, I agree with that. Uh, but I don't agree with the whole violence part. I don't even know where you, why would you just put violence in there to make it seem like it's a lot harder than it actually is, or a lot crazier than it actually is. It's not violence. You gotta look up the definition of violent. It has, it's physical violence, physical, physical. The caveat, as long as they're healthy, isn't progressive, it's violent. It fails to acknowledge the denial of access to healthcare that fat people face. What do you mean by the denial of access to healthcare. Where do you live where fat people are de being denied access to healthcare? Because it can't be here in the West. If they're being denied access, it has to be through the, the, the idea of not being able to get out of their bed because they're so fat. But then it's not the healthcare problem. That's not the problem of the, 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 the clinics, the hospitals, or like the healthcare services. 
actually being the issue. It's that you are so big that you have impeded your ability to leave your house. You can't be mad at the doctors for that. Like if you call up and go, hey man, I need a doctor's appointment. The guy goes, yeah, come in tomorrow. And you go, yep, okay. And then you call up the next day like, I can't come in, I'm too fat. And the doctor's like, oh, okay. And then you go, you fucking bitch. How fucking dare you make sure, how dare you not come into my house and bring in your whole clinic and all your equipment and all that other stuff to treat me here. You knew I was too fat to get it out of bed. You knew it was your problem. Like, that's what you're doing. You're, instead of taking responsibility for a lot of the stuff that you can't take responsibility, you're taking that and you're putting it upon somebody else that may or may not even know that you have this issue to begin with. And if that's not what you're talking about, are you talking about like going to the doctor and a doctor saying that you have an issue with being obese and you're counting that as like abuse or violence in some way? Dude, what do you, if the doctor is there and he doesn't talk about your weight, that would be an issue in my opinion. Now, sure, you can go to that doctor and go, I don't wanna talk about my weight, but then if you go to the doctor for that for an issue that has to do with your weight, what the fuck is he supposed to do? Nothing, can't do anything. It fails to acknowledge the systemic design of fat phobia. There is, man, look, there is some systemic issues. If you really want, if you really want to, if you really want to go that far, there are systemic issues that fat people face in terms of societal oppression. This is true, but it's the most bullshit argument I've ever heard in my fucking life, dude. Because guess what? If you wanted to be hired by a job and that job needed you to be a certain weight in order for you to execute the job or at least be of a healthy stature enough to be able to do this job and you don't meet that, you don't meet that requirement, guess what? Guess what? Systemic issue. Systemic, oh no, society doesn't want me to get this job because I'm too fat. Stairs, systemic issue. Oh my God, stairs exist because society put them in place. Bullshit, it's just terrible. Nobody uses systemic issues like this. It is such a, my good golly, this is a blasphemous use of systemic issues. How can you ever consider these things to be systemic issues? You are so far off the beaten path of normality. This is the reason why people don't listen to this bullshit. You are so far gone, you're using things like systemic issues to justify the, the claim to fame to being fat when the systemic issues are literally stairs exist. Mm-mm, mm-mm, uh-uh. This is the bootstrapping mythology of American individualism. This mythology would have us believe that health, wealth, and whiteness are proof of morality. Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? What does whiteness have, what are you, why are you just putting that in there? Aren't you white? I can see through you. What are you talking about? What does white have to do with anything? It would have us believe that inequality and the privilege of the powerful is actually justice. What? I mean, maybe. The fuck did that have to do with anything? Okay. But like, odds are it probably won't. Because if you hate yourself when you're fat and you lose weight, you're probably still gonna hate yourself after. I think. <laughs> Man, dude, anytime somebody makes a realistic claim, and then they go, nah, you won't feel that good after you lose weight. How do you know that? Like, have you ever lost weight? Have you ever lost weight? No, you never lost weight. It's okay. If you never lost weight, I think you can still talk on this. But given the fact that a lot of the issues that somebody might be having could be alleviated with losing weight, and they feel like they could possibly have those things be improved. I've met a lot of people, and of course this is anecdotal, but in the same way you're making this anecdotal claim, I can make my anecdotal claim. I've met a lot of people, hundreds of people, that have told me, I've lost weight, I feel so much better. I can walk, I can run, I can do aerobics, I eat less, I maintain my health, I'm more attractive, I feel better in general. I've heard that hundreds of times. And you can say, David, that's only anecdotal evidence and you have no proof that overall speaking that people are gonna feel better when they lose weight. You're right, I know, <laughs> you're right. You're gonna find somebody somewhere that lost weight and goes, I don't feel good anymore, I don't want to be, I don't feel the best. I did. I, I, I don't even feel better than I did when I was 500 pounds, even though I'm 160 pounds. Sure, sure, sure. Countless people talk about who have undergone that weight loss but didn't do the internal work because they thought losing weight would make themselves feel better when there were just new things to hate about themselves. You have a very, this person is so, this, stupid, okay? Can I just say this, dude? I, I was scrolling through today, okay? I was scrolling through TikTok, and I saw this person, and I was like, they make some good fat acceptance stuff, right? Let me click on their channel. And they've been on the real, like, Palestine stuff, and say whatever you want about Palestine, right? Whatever, dude, I don't care. Either way, I love you regardless. Whatever you want to think. This person had a terrible, 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 disgusting take on somebody, you remember that guy, like, uh, I don't know when this video, you're seeing this video, but the guy that like burned himself alive, right? You know what I'm talking about, the, the Marine guy, he was 25 years old and he was doing it for Palestine. 
And I was mortified at this person's response to that. So I just watched a video of Aaron Bushnell, who was 25 years old and in the Air Force, and he just in the ultimate act of protest for Palestine and against what's happening in Israel and the United States uh, complicit actions, he self-emulated in front of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. And I just can't stop thinking about how we are so corrupt as a country that this is the second self-emulation that I know of in recent years protesting. The last one was for the climate crisis, which we're all one day or other going to succumb to. But this man, described as like one of the most principled people by his peers, sacrificed his life. He stood there saying he would no longer be complicit to the genocide that's happening right now in Palestine. And it just- Before we go any further, okay? I just want to make sure the guy that killed him, the guy that died, okay? The, the guy that self-immolated, right? That was retarded, okay? I don't care what anybody says. We live in a democracy, okay? A democracy. I know a lot of people will say, David, no, it's a republic. I know, it's a democratic republic. Okay, I get it. But you have the ability to let your opinions be known. You got social media, you got a platform, you can say things, you're, you're whatever, bro. You can go on the streets, put up signs and go, free Palestine, right? You could do that. Why the fuck would you ever, 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 ever decide to just die? doing this as if it's going to mean anything at all. I uh, how many people do you think watched that and went, "You know what? I think I changed my mind about it. I thought the I thought the Jewish people were really dreidels. I thought dreidels were great and I thought, you know, all this stuff about Jewish foreskin. I don't you know what? Ever since that guy did that one thing on in that military base, I I I I just changed my mind. I just think that is probably a lot. No. No, I don't think anybody's done that. If you did, then you have bad you have a bad idea about how shit, is, how shit is supposed to be. Nobody, okay? If you're in a situation, okay, and you have no other way to, like, stake a claim, you have no other way to voice your opinion, like if you're incarcerated or maybe you're in a, a, a maybe like a very, very bad country or something like that where you have no freedom of speech, you have no freedom of press, you have no freedom of anything at all, the only thing you could do is, like, starving yourself or, in this particular case, self-immolation and all this other stuff. Then, like, I understood. I can understand it. Because, like, you had no other way to voice yourself, right? Which is what we saw in the past. Like, a lot of people did do stuff like that. Because they, no they had no other way to say stuff. Here in America, dude, how many things can people do right now to voice their opinion? And when I saw that happen, I was like, this is dumb. This is dumb. I don't know why would anybody would do this shit. So... I don't think that person was a hero. I think that that shit was probably terrible. That was not right. You shouldn't, dude, you couldn't post about it on fucking Facebook for 45 minutes to do an Instagram live, tell people how about how you feel. Instead, you had to go into like, no, bro. Anyway. Just how can something like that happen and it not even be front page news? How, how, how can something so severe happen? And then just people just don't care. Like how? Because how it's not. Like I said, dude, because there's just so many other ways you could have done this, especially here in America when you have like, I know there's, I know there'll be some people that go, David, you're wrong. I could be wrong on this. I could be. Leave it down below if you think I'm wrong. But here in America, you have the ability to voice your opinion. And I know a lot of people might say, David, no, we can't because you don't have this. You don't have that platform. I understand. I get it. You're not like the big people on the top. You're not like Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Oprah Winfrey that can say whatever the fuck they want and affect millions of people. But is this really like this? I, I don't think this has any effect. I, this has no effect. This shit, this shit literally died in a day or two, two days at most. Like, I'm, I'm, nobody's talking about it right now. So, no, I don't think that this was powerful. I don't think it was like a big speaking point. I think it was dumb. I think it was not the right way to do shit. And um, anyway, how do our leaders not care? I we live in such a morally corrupt country. You can't judge. Like, what do you think is gonna happen? You think like AOC is gonna wake up and be like, oh, you know, after that guy did that thing, oh man, Palestine. You think Joe Biden is getting up and looking at that and going, yeah, yeah. Now I'm gonna completely change how I think because of that one guy that did that. Th no, that's not how that fucking works, dude. That's dumb. Country and I genuinely, I'm at such an utter loss for words, but I will forever remember this video along with everything else that we've seen from Palestine, like, that's just, I, his last words were free Palestine, and I truly pray that we get to see a free Palestine in our lifetimes. It's dumb. It's dumb. Okay. It's just dumb. It is what it is. It's dumb. You want to hate me for the, I, I disagree with it. I don't think he should have done it, what he did. I think there were better ways of doing it. And I think his message could have gone a lot farther if he actually did those things instead of doing what he did. That's what I think personally. Anyway, let's get back to the video. If you don't do the work and if you don't learn to love yourself as you are in whatever position you are, whatever way you are, you're never going to learn to love yourself. And 
I think that people should work on the fact that, that like they are things about themselves that they can't change and that's okay. And even if there are things that you can change, it's okay to accept yourself in the way that you are and think that you're good or like, you know, you love yourself and things like that. I agree. I think that's like super really good for people, but it's not, it shouldn't be a hindrance for improvement because if you're thinking that you're perfect or beautiful and there's nothing you can do to change yourself, you're quickly going to find out that you're never going to change because why would you change if you have everything already set? In the same way that these people would fit, sit there and go, no, I'm good. I'm perfect. I don't need to change. I'm fat, but that doesn't mean anything. Then they never change. They just continuously be fat and have their bodies be continuously dilapidated year by year, suffering more and more problems and just continue to be the way that they are. And skinny or fat, you're going to hate yourself regardless. There are literally dozens, dozens of grown people who are constantly making videos about me and other fat creators who went through the process of losing weight, who have so much hatred for themselves and for other fat people that they literally dedicate their lives to making fun of and talking shit about fat people. There is no shortcut to self-love. It took me years to get to a point where I was comfortable in my own body. Where I was able to look at myself in the mirror and be happy about what I saw. To get to a point where I think it's okay to love yourself. I do. I think that's awesome. Go ahead and love yourself. Love yourself now. But I think that it's super important to look at yourself with a critical eye and go, I don't have to be fat. I don't have to not have muscles. I don't, I want to be more, I want to be more in it. I want to go and I want to run and I want to be able to walk more and I want to be able to eat less and I want to feel better. These things are super important. You can look at yourself and think I'm beautiful. That's fine. But there are things that you can change. And if there isn't, that's fine. That's great. I'm glad that you've reached the pinnacle of beauty, but you should never look at that as something that's going to intrude on your ability to grow. You understand? Like if you can grow, you should. You should have the ability to push yourself as much as you can, not so much that you're gonna like snap. You know what I'm talking about? I think sometimes people will see an unachievable goal that they'll never be able to achieve and they'll shoot for that goal knowing that they'll never shoot for it and then they'll always end in disaster because you can't hit that fucking goal. Make realistic goals. You know what I'm talking about? Realistic goals, things that you can change. Don't think that you're gonna lose I don't know. Let's say you weigh 500 pounds. Don't think you're going to lose like 300 pounds in a year. That might be a little bit hard for you, but 100 pounds, you can do it, right? 50 pounds, you can do it. That's good. And then you hit that goal. You feel better. You know you feel better because you physically feel better and things like that. And the achievement of it, hitting that goal. Where every single day my thoughts weren't consumed by my weight and how fat I was and how much I didn't like myself. That didn't just happen overnight. We live in a really fat phobic society, in a society that teaches. I, 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 it must be so, it must be great to live in these people's shoes, dude. I mean, not literally. I'm sure the shoes are like this, where they're like dented or whatever. I think it's probably so great in the sense of like these people always put their responsibilities on other people, right? They always do it. We live in a fat phobic society. Society is really bad for us. We can't walk upstairs. Society puts stairs in place. It's just got to be so great to go through your entire life and never actually ever take accountability for anything that you decided to do for yourself, which is what you did to be fat. You can't blame anyone else but yourself. You are fat. Like you can't, who are you gonna blame? Joe? You gonna blame Joe Biden, big daddy Joe, that you gained weight? Trump, who are you gonna blame? You can't blame anybody but yourself. You're your own human being. You're an adult first and foremost. And then because of that, you have the ability to decide what you do and do not eat and how you do and do not exercise. These are things that are fundamental to you and you can decide those things. And I'm sorry that you think that now you're being restricted by the, 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 the boundaries of being obese. That's true. That's just what it is though. Being fat is not something that's going to be optimal in almost any setting ever. So, I mean, it's just what you're dealing with, dude. And I don't, you, I don't think it's fair to sit there and always blame it on everybody else. I was and how much I didn't like myself. That didn't just happen overnight. We live in a really fat phobic society, in a society that teaches us to constantly nitpick about what we look like and hate ourselves and hate our bodies. And hate I don't everything. think it's like that anymore. I think a lot of people nowadays, like it's very organic. Like the 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 the. The, the, the amount of virtue signaling that we used to have back in the day in the early 2000s where women were like super, super thin and you had to be really, really thin. I think it's like, I wouldn't say it reversed, but dude, I think the messaging now, especially for women is, it's like, it's not, it's completely different. It's not like co completely reversed, not like 180, but women nowadays, I feel like are in a different bracket, right? Back then women had to be very thin in the early 2000s, I'm talking about, they had to be very thin, they had to be very petite. Nowadays women, dude, all I hear is like, yeah, my girl got to have that fat ass. My girl got to be big and thick and things like that. Like unrealistic body standards in the sense of like really thick thighs, big butt cheeks, small top half. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. But I think it's also important to understand that men are also held by these restrictions nowadays. Dude, gym culture has taught men that if you don't have abs, you're just a bitch or like you haven't fucking, you know, you're not like a real guy or anything like that. And it's real tough. Like I, I wouldn't say that people are 
nitpicking, but there are standards. There are standards of what is and what is not beautiful. And of course, you can be outside those boundaries and people can find you attractive regardless. I do agree those things exist, but I wouldn't say nitpick. I think that there are like brackets, if that makes any sense. Everything about ourselves, but I did the work. I, I did the work and now I love myself. I'm a fat person who loves myself, who's confident and happy in my body. And I'm surrounded by thin people who do not feel the same way. Maybe you would love yourself more if you were skinny, but that's not the only thing that you need to do. And it's not true. It's not the only thing that you need to do. There's always stuff that you could do more. It's always beneficial to grow in more directions. If you're fat and you've deemed yourself happy in the size that you are and you don't want to lose weight, that's fine. It's probably not good though, because if the, the end result of you is being unhealthy and there is something that you could do to be unhealthy now i want everybody to realize this it's not just your life right a lot of people have kids a lot of people have people that they take care of like maybe your parents maybe you have family members maybe you have friends that rely on you for certain things maybe you have a job maybe you have a whole bunch of responsibilities that other people rely on you for and what you're basically doing is you're making their lives harder because you decided to <sighs> I wouldn't say be selfish. It is your right to be whatever you want. But in all honesty, especially if you have kids and family members that you're taking care of, dude, take care of yourself as much as you can. I feel like people should be, you should be taking care of yourself in the same way that you would be taking care of somebody else. If you know that eating this whole box of pizza wouldn't be good for your mom, your dad, your fucking children or whatever, then yes, don't eat it. Don't eat that. It's not a good idea. It's not going to be beneficial for them. It's not going to be beneficial for you. A lot of people don't treat themselves well they walk around and they continuously shovel shit in their mouth all day and they don't do anything to take care of themselves and they do that all day every day months to years okay that's terrible take care of yourself as though you would take care of yourself as you're taking care of somebody else that's the most important thing people should work on themselves if you're obese and you know it's not good for you you should lose weight that is something you should do i'm yeah. fat and I have this radical idea that I'm allowed to exist. Why do you do this to yourself, man? This is this is some of the cringiest stuff I've ever seen on the internet. These people think they're so unique, so artistic to do this weird stuff. And they end up looking so weird in the process of doing it. Nobody thinks that you shouldn't exist. Why are you saying that? Why do you think that? Why do, you, why do you want to be so oppressed so bad that you have to say this terrible, stupid stuff? Nobody thinks that. Nobody. You should exist. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Crazy. And not just to exist. To thrive. To make the world more wonderful. You're a beautiful person, dude. I, I can't take any more of this person. This person is on some different shit, dude. I'm sorry. This person is too much for me. I can't take that person, dude. Anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things. I'd appreciate tremendously helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do that stuff for me, I'd appreciate it. If you want to be a member of my channel, you can. I have a second channel, by the way. That's going to be stream clips and other things like that. Um, if you like this type of content, you might like that type of content. So anyway, um, that's going to be linked in the description as long with my uh, Discord and other social medias. If you watch the video in its entirety. Leave it down below by typing in shoelace because I got a shoelace. I bought this the other day. Um, I'm not sure if it is going to. I think it might be too long. I have boots and I don't know. I tie my boots and my shoes very tight because I like having my shoes be constricted to my feet as much as I possibly can. And I end up like ripping laces. I've went through three laces on my shoes and two laces on my boots and it is tragedy um, because these laces were very expensive laces. So I just went to Walmart and I just picked up cheap. These were $2. $2 for these laces. So leave it down below. Type in shoelaces. You beautiful, amazing, spectacular human being person. I love you, by the way. I love that you're here. The most expensive resource we have in this reality is time. You can make money. You can invest correctly. You can do a whole bunch of stuff to make money. And you can do a lot of stuff like that, right? But the most expensive resource, in my opinion, I feel like is true, is time. Time is the most expensive resource. So be this, so because you spent your time with me, it is quite a privilege. Don't think I ever sleep on that. Thank you so much for giving me your time, giving me you. Get, you know, I, I just really care that you gave me that. It's so beautiful, man. I really appreciate it. Don't think it. I'll always be humbled by this. You are an amazing person. I love the progress that you do every single day. Um, I love those before and afters. I love how you you managed to transform yourself in a more positive direction. In the, in the general speaking sense, more more of a moral person 
more of an equal person. You've done more for yourself than most people possibly could. You're a great, amazing, beautiful person. I want to kiss you on the eyebrow. You amazing, awesome person. Anyway, guys. We're gonna end the video here. If you wanna check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter and Discord and second channel. If you wanna do, if you wanna go on any of those things, go ahead, feel free to. They'll be all linked down in the description and the about page on my channel. Just click on my channel and then click about and then you'll find a whole, a whole bunch of um, stuff like that. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.